give everyone out there who may not know just a brief background on who you are? My name is Lincoln O'Berry, and pretty much my whole life I've worked with my dad. Uh, we have an organization called Dolphin Project, and basically our mandate is for the welfare and protection of dolphins worldwide. And we primarily deal with dolphins with the captivity issue and also dolphins that are being slaughtered in that issue. So how did you get, I mean, obviously your dad is like a, a, a super famous figure in this, in this world. And, you know, he's, you guys have been a part of movies like The Cove. How did he bring you into this whole world? I just got brought into it because it was, you know, in the house when the phone rang, it was usually somebody calling for the Dolphin Project. And so I just, you know, as a little kid, just got used to answering the phone, like Dolphin Project. And, yeah. you know, well, it was just what I knew. Like, you know, we had, like, when I was a little kid, we had a facility with dolphins when I was like, you know, a baby. And so I grew up just having dolphins right there, basically at the house and stuff. Okay. Um, you know, he, for those that don't know how he got his star, Rick O'Berry, my dad, he was initially the a trainer at the Miami Sea Aquarium, which was, at the time was like the second or third dolphinarium in the entire country. And it was located in Miami. And um, this was the very early 1960s. And basically when he got out of the Navy, he got a job at the Sea Aquarium. I think his first job was working on their collection boat. And that was the boat that would go out and get all the animals It would go to the reef and they'd get fish and they'd get turtles and they'd catch dolphins as well. And a lot of them were caught here or in Miami, the original dolphins at the Aquarium. And then uh, Flipper came along and just to a chance meeting one day at the Aquarium, my dad met Rico Browning, who was the director and kind of creator of Flipper. And at that time, they were just shooting the initial pilot, which was actually a movie. Hmm. And um, Rico was the trainer on that the movie. And then it was very popular and got picked up as a TV show. And so they decided to use the back lot of Sequarium to do the series. And my dad had met Rico. And so my dad became the head trainer. Rico wanted to be the director. And so he directed all the episodes and my dad was the trainer. And so they actually went and caught five dolphins that were going to play Flipper because you have to have multiple dolphins um, in case one doesn't want to work or some are better at some tricks than others. Yeah. And, um, so my dad helped a year or two before the show even started shooting, helped catch the dolphins. They were in a back part of the Miami Sea Aquarium and then trained the dolphins. And then basically, you know, they would shoot all the exterior shots with the dolphins all at one time for all the episodes. So they would come for like a month or five weeks and shoot all those shots. And then everything else was done in sound stages and other locations. And so then my dad was basically left alone for most of the year with the dolphins. And so he lived there right when you see the Flipper TV show, like where Ranger Rick and his family lived, like that's where my dad lived. And he had the dock right there. And he would sometimes take the TV set with a long extension cord and put it out on the dock and like watch Flipper with Flipper, the dolphins. And like he lived there with them and he was employed by the TV show and the Sequarium at the same time. So he was like the highest paid person at the Sequarium and was driving a sports car and, you know, then with the popularity of Flipper, Flipper, the TV series, took off like a rocket. So now everyone wants to hug a dolphin, kiss a dolphin, see a dolphin. So now Miami Aquarium, where he works, started catching dolphins and selling them. I think it was like a female dolphin was like 350 bucks, and a male dolphin would be $250. And you could literally pull up in your station wagon to the Aquarium, and for 350 bucks, they'd load a dolphin in your car and you could drive off and they didn't know if it was going to someone's house or going to an aquarium or where it was going. And so you saw a proliferation all of a sudden of dolphinariums. They were popping up everywhere with, with the popularity of Flipper. And so um, eventually the Flipper series ended. And those dolphins were partially owned by the TV show and the aquarium. And they were actually just warehoused in the back. They weren't used for shows after that. And my dad, after needed a few some time off, and he was just kind of hanging out, and he gets a phone call one day that his favorite dolphin named Kathy, there were five dolphins that played Flipper, but one he identified with the most and spent the most time with, um, he got a call that she was near death. So he went to this aquarium, and she literally swam into his arms and died. And he just at that moment kind of had this moment of epiphany, like, what have I done? Like, I'm the guy that trained Flipper that made dolphins popular, and now they're popular, and now there are dolphinariums everywhere, and I helped catch a lot of those dolphins. And 
This was in 1970, approximately right around now. It was like the beginning of April, end of March is when the flipper died. And so he just kind of didn't know what to do. And so on Earth Day, 1970, which is 50 years, we're selling that anniversary this month on the 22nd. Um, my dad flew to Bimini where they had sold somebody there three or three or four dolphins. Um, it was called the Lerner Marine Laboratory. It was owned by a family that owned a chain of shopping stores called Lerner. And they had they had their own lab that they created. It's basically their pet dolphins, but they had like kind of like other animals in cages and you could see them and they said they were doing research, but it was really just a family thing. Um, anyhow, all the dolphins had died. There was only one left named Charlie Brown. So on Earth Day 1970, my dad flew to Bimini wearing a green armband in, in symbolic for Earth Day. And he went that night of Earth Day and cut the pen to let Charlie Brown go. And the pen fell away and the dolphin was swimming around. He wouldn't leave. And so my dad got in the pen. He's trying to chase the dolphin out. It wouldn't leave. And finally, he had rent, my dad had rented a little rubber, 12-foot rubber boat with a motor to get out to the sea pen. And it was very high tide. And so he was able to get the boat into the pen and was trying to chase the dolphin out and for hours. And the dolphin wouldn't leave. And eventually the tide dropped. And now the boat is stuck inside of the pen that he rented. So it's going to come back to him. So he just put his green armband on. He walked down to the office of the Learner Marine Lab, knocked on the door, and basically told him, like, last night I tried to let your dolphin go. So they arrested him. And it was, like, front page of the Miami Herald, Flipper's trainer in a flap. And there's the picture of him being led into jail wearing his Miami Seaquarium T-shirt. He had his Seaquarium T-shirt on. I, he spent, like, four or five days in jail. And then... Um, the judge let him out and gave him a $5 fine and threw him out of the country. And um, about two weeks after that, my dad was in Miami just milling about, what do I want to do? Like, what's going on with my life? Like, you know, what, what? And he actually went sailing with, um, he was best friends at the times with a guy named Fred Neal, who was a very famous folk singer. He wrote the theme song to Midnight Cowboy, Everybody's Talking. That was okay. his song, but he's got many others. And he was kind of the godfather of the folk music scene. And many other musicians hung around this guy. And um, so Fred that day was going sailing with Stephen Stills from Crosby, Stills and Nash and showed up at my dad's house. Was knew my dad was depressed and was like, come on, come on the boat. And so my dad's out sailing in the bay with them. And they're talking about, you know, my dad just told him what happened. And he quit his job and he just got arrested. And he's like, I think I want to do this. I want to let dolphins go. I want to tear down what I've just built, this monster that I created, this dolphin area industry. Yeah. And Stephen Stills and Fred Neal, loan, I think wrote it right there, wrote him a check. They're like, as long as what you do is legal, we're behind you. And they wrote him a check for like five grand. And with that money, my dad went and printed some Dolphin Project t-shirts. And then um, he identified a dolphin in the Keys um, there's a place called Dolphin Research Center in the Keys. It was called, uh, I think it was called Flipper Sea School back then. And it was a place where you could pay to swim with the dolphins. And um, a guy named Hugh Downs, he was a famous broadcaster. He used to host uh, 2020 back in the day when 2020 was like 60 minutes. It was a respectable like news show. And um, he owned this dolphin. It was like his pet dolphin. And he left, he it would, it would live at this facility where they took care of it. And whenever he was in the Keys, he'd visit it. It was kind of like Bubbles, the chimp with Michael Jackson. Like, you know, the chimp wasn't at Michael's house all the time. It was like once in a while he'd go visit it wherever it was. Or, um, But so my dad convinced Hugh Downs to let him have the dolphin and that they wanted to release it back in the wild. And so my mom and dad, who weren't married, they were just dating at the time, went down to the Keys, set up a tent. It had a Dolphin Project logo that we still have to this day on, on the tent and lived there with the dolphins. And we eventually moved them up to uh, Coconut Grove, where, we, where I am now, uh, Key Biscayne. And we set up a facility there where we had the dolphins for a couple of years. And then eventually rented a uh, seaplane, put the dolphins in it, and flew them to the Bahamas. In wow. Like 1974, I think. 74, 75. And just flew around till we saw wild dolphins and landed the seaplane and let them go. And that was the first, like, 
release of dolphins that the Dolphin Project did. And then wow. this, and so we basically had that mandate. My dad basically has spent the past 50 years of his life, 50 years on April 22nd, um, releasing, you know, trying to tear down this industry that he created. And no, you know, there's been a lot of like whistleblower, Blackfish had a bunch of whistleblower trainers because my dad has that experience of being in the industry to be able to speak about it. But his, his story is just so unique because he was just there at the birth of the movement and he can, you know, it, it's not his fault what happened, but he can, he was in that position where he was part of what made dolphins popular and then also catching them. And so he really felt responsible for it. And so he's just, I think the guilt is kind of like led him his whole life. <laughs>